All right, four minutes down here to the top of the hour. We know all week we've been telling, talking about Donald Trump and Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush felt like he was targeted by Trump for the longest time. He has decided to ignore him. But now that he is predominant front runner, I'm not talking about Bush. I'm talking about Trump. It's clear that Jeb has got a quick reaction team uh, laying the bait and firing back. The latest, uh, the latest tantrum between them has to do with the language Jeb spoke in Miami in response to a question. That's right. It all started on Tuesday, and this is what it sounded like. El hombre no es conservador. Se, se trata de personalizar todo. Si no estás totalmente en acuerdo con él, eres idiota o estúpido o que no tiene energía o bla, bla, bla. Hmm. It appears he reserved some of his strongest punches back for the Spanish language, for sure. Donald Trump, as he often says he will do, says, I may not strike first, but I will strike back. There's, I don't know who's striking first and back at this point. It's just a total back and forth. But Donald Trump came back and said this in response to Jeb Bush. He said, I like Jeb. He's a nice man. But he, re he should really set the example by speaking English while in the United States. Well, just moments ago, Jeb Bush responds to that quote hmm. by Trump. This morning, brand new. And this is what he said. The fact that he would say you only can speak English is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Are we going to close all the foreign language classes? Is he, why would he have a, a contract with Univision for his beauty pageant? I mean, this is a diverse country. We should, we should celebrate that diversity and embrace a set of shared values. And Mr. Trump doesn't believe in those shared values. I laughed. I mean, this is a joke. Strongest point yet, perhaps, by Jeb Bush. I mean, language. Uh, the question is, what do you do if you're an American reporter and you're in America and you are wondering what they're talking about? Do you, can you report that story? And if, I have, if I didn't have subtitles, because I focused on German in high school, if I didn't have subtitles, I would not know that he was talking about Donald Trump. I would have missed the story. Well, there and there are very different, uh, you know, news conversations going on. And when it and there's legitimate concerns amongst many who are, who look at Donald Trump and say, hey, he's saying what I've been thinking. This is a, a traditionally an English-speaking country. We have a shared set of a conversation that goes on that ties us together civically and there's been a lot more uh, bifurcation in this country and obviously as politicians need to speak to everyone who votes and a lot of those speak so, Spanish but it hits it to a chord of many who are frustrated by what they feel is a split in this country. But it also may bode well for Jeb Bush long term if he continued to speak both. Sure. You know it can actually sure. really he, this is what he naturally does. He's not posing as someone who wants to no, reach he says out he to speaks the Spanish around the, around the house he says. This is who he is and I think it may be his strongest Trump card. But yeah. it's easier to do a story if I understand the language. So well, if I was out there covering that story, I'd say, excuse me, what just happened? Absolutely. No, so, that's fair. I'm just saying. But he's speaking to different audiences, different channels, and totally different conversations. And that, that's what I think Jeb is trying to take advantage of. Well, Donald Trump driving all the news right now in many, in many ways. In fact, the, the RNC, Donald Trump is headed to, well, he'll be in the Trump Towers, and the RNC is heading to him, uh, writes Priebus specifically, to talk about a pledge uh, that the RNC has recently introduced that he would, uh, to all candidates, it's, huge. it's, it's, huge. it's uh, definitely focused on Donald Trump as to whether or not they would run as a third party candidate. Yeah, that's a big uh, this election. That's a big fear for the RNC a and Donald Trump. A huge fear because, you know, he didn't, uh, when at the debate, when Brett Baer asked him, okay, raise your hand if you, you cannot promise that you wouldn't run as a third party candidate, Don, Donald Trump said, I can't. And you know what? It's leverage for me. And so he's been using that as a power play right now uh, against other candidates in this primary season. And the, can the actual promise would say this, I will endorse the 2016 Republican presidential nominee regardless of who it is. I will not seek to run as an independent or writing candidate, nor will I seek or accept the nomination for president of another party. There is some distrust that Donald Trump, Trump would not support the nominee should it not be him. And if he does sign this paper, it will put that to rest. Today's the day it could all happen. Well, it's all about him, and I just think that it's great, uh, it's great optics, too. It's going to be 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and then we're going to have into the, the Thursday night. People are going to be watching, and they're going to say, what is the big news story of the day? Is it Governor Kasich saying, I'll take the pledge? Is it George Pataki saying, I'll take the pledge? Is it Jeb Bush telling the AP, I'll take the pledge? No. It's a meeting that was already tipped off and a press conference that's already been announced at the Trump Tower featuring Donald Trump front and center. That's stagecraft. You know, it's how to sure. play it. Two o'clock's a big moment. The RNC is using the leverage it still has left, which is to try to make sure that a Republican runs as a Republican and not as an independent. Big announcement this afternoon to see what comes out That's of that right. meeting. In the meantime, Donald Trump has been saying you're either with me or else. We'll see how that goes. Now this. Remember that?